Is Greninja finally a viable deck? I took this deck to my local tournament last week and I got 4th place with a record of 3-1. And honestly, it feels really fun to play. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys a bunch of gameplays on Pokemon TCG Live. But first, let's quickly go over the deck. This is the deck list right here. Pause the video if you want to see their deck or I'll have it in the comment section. Of course, Greninja EX is your main attacker of this deck. You have the first attack, Shinobi Blade, for 1 water energy. It does 170 damage. And you get to grab any card from your deck and add it to your hand. The second attack, Mirage Barrage, for 1 water energy and 2 colorless. You can do 120 damage to 2 of your opponent's Pokemon as long as you discard 2 energy. The reason this deck got a little better is because of the new ace spec, Sparkling Crystal. When you attach this tool to a Terra Pokemon, the attack of the Pokemon is one less energy, which is why we have so many different attackers in this deck. Let's start off with Perigiraffe EX. Thanks to his ability, it prevents all damage done to him by basic Pokemon EX. This card is mainly there against the Raging Bolt matchup, so if you attach a Sparkling Crystal to him, you only need a Double Turbo to use his attack. Next, we have the Cornerstone Opon EX. It has an ability that prevents all damage done to him by Pokemon with abilities, which there is a lot in the current meta, but it's a good attacker against Charizard or Regi Draco V-Star. Next, we have the Wellspring Opon EX. EX. He's mainly there for his first attack, Sob, which prevents your opponent from retreating their active Pokemon next turn. It's good against decks that don't have a lot of switching options. And if you ever need to, you can also attack with Luminion V. As long as you have the Sparkling Crystal attached, you can just attach a Double Turbo to use his attack, which does 120 damage, minus 20 damage from the Double Turbo, and then you shuffle Luminion and all attached cards back into the deck. So you can use the Sparkling Crystal for other Pokemon. And then lastly, we have Blood Moon Race Luna EX. He's mainly there as a late game attacker. If you have any questions about this deck, please let me know in the comments. Alright, let's get into some gameplays on Pokemon CCG Live. And of course, I have all the time stamps for all the matches right down below. Jumping into our first game, we're gonna choose heads to go first. And we did land the heads, so we do wanna go first. Yeah, for this deck, I prefer to go first, but going second is not too bad sometimes. Uh, it kinda just depends on what Pokemon you start with. Our starting hand is not the best. We have to start with a Giraffe Rig. But depending on what our opponent play, it might not be a bad start. Judging from their sleeves, it looks like Terrapico sleeves. Could it be another? Could it be a Terrapico stick? It's a hoot hoot. So we can probably guess that it will be Terrapicos. So we do have Nest Ball and Ultra Ball to get our basic Pokemon to start. I think I'll probably just go with a Froakie here. Since we have Ultra Ball next turn and the Rare Candy in hand and the Energy and the Rescue Board. So we have a lot of things that we can set up next turn and just attack. It might not be the best board to start, but going against the Rapagos, we know they cannot attack going first turn two. So I put the Fez down just in case that they are on us. And then next turn we can Ultra Ball one of the rare candies away and maybe the card that we draw is like not as needed. So they got the Buddy Poffin, which probably they're gonna get Fan Rotom and maybe a Dust Gold. Fan Rotom and Dust Gold. They're probably checking their deck at the moment. Yep, Fan Rotom and Dust Gold. Pretty, pretty like standard start for Terrapagos, I would say. Fan Rotom probably gets out another Hoot Hoot. Knocked out on the Pidgey. There's the Pidgey. There's the Hoot Hoot. And they probably won't. It's smart for them not to bench a Terrapagos because we can we might be able to capture it or take them down. Like boss order it up. If we have the card. Unfortunately we do have to get rid of this Pidgey because I do want to just start attacking right away. Reducing one hoot hoot means they have less cards to work with next turn. So we rare candy, the Froki, which evolves it to straight into Greninja. We don't need the middle evolution. We have the rescue board to retreat for free. We attack with the first attack Shinobi Blade and then we get one card which I'm probably going to get Iono since my hand has absolutely nothing and we know for sure they have ways to summon out for sure Pidgeot EX if they wanted to because they do have Hoot Hoot in their hand Hoot Hoot or not Hoot Hoot, Noctow. Noctow is so broken where you just literally put the Noctow down, get Feather Ball and Rare Candy and then boom you're able to get your Pidgeot. They have the Dust Snore. Are they gonna pop it? Or are they just gonna leave in the active? They're Ultra Balling. They Ultra Ball away their double turbo. Do they have another double turbo in hand? So I'm guessing they're probably going to knock Tau for Feather Ball or Rare Candy. 
I think it was interesting to get rid of the double turbo. But I guess... Okay, they got Buddy Hoffin and Research. Very interesting play from them. Very interesting play. Because if they got Feather Ball and Rare Candy, they can get Pidgeot and they can still get the Research. So they are, their bench is looking pretty full. They can Fez for even more cards. Nine cards in their hand, guys. Deck is kind of crazy. Fezzendipity is broken. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. So they just need a double turbo. And then they can literally blow. Okay. They whiff the double turbo. But our hand is kind of bad. So we're definitely going to I don't know. I'm deb debating if I should put the water energy. But I was like, they're probably going to knock it out next turn. Because Dustnor is resistant to fighting. So I can't knock them out. Sadly. So we can't, we really can't do much here. I'm gonna just set up another Froki and the Bidoof. Just in case they knock it out, which they will probably will. They just need a double turbo. And our hand's still kind of bad. So we just attack regardless. It doesn't even matter if I attack or not, but at least we can get some damage down because we can't kill it. And then even if they pop it, it's like I attack for nothing. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I'm still going to do it, right? I hope I do it. So I can still get a card. Please tell me I do it. I end my turn. That's a misplay by me. No, come on. Yes, attack. You should attack to get a card for next turn. I think I was searching for... A I should get the Babero here. Let's try to draw more next turn. Or another Iono. One of the draw supporters. Yeah, I think it's Babero. So we can draw next turn. We also have boss in hand, so we can boss up whatever we need to. My opponent is just literally just needs a double turbo. Pop the dust nor and then they'll able to knock out my Greninja EX. With seven cards in their hand, and I'm guessing it's all dead. So they have Noctowl. So I'm expecting maybe a Iono play here if they don't have the Noctile. Or Feather Ball, Rare Candy to get Pidgeot. Unless their Feather Ball, oh there it is. Unless their Feather Ball was like prize last turn. Or was prize. I don't know. I still think they should have Pidgeot EX really earlier. Earlier on. And I think this game would have went a lot differently. So they're probably gonna Pidgeot for a double turbo. That means my fro Oh, they already, they have double turbo in hand. That means I'm cooked. I need a lot next turn. Pop that. Okay. We get a prize card at least, though. So that's not a bad thing. And then even if it knock, knock us out, we'll be able to be at even prize card. And I'm able to one-shot him, too. So... The one shot the Terrapagos. In this matchup, we kind of have more of a favorable matchup just because we one shot a Terrapagos and their Pheasantipity. And then we can also like do some cheeky plays and use Mirage Barrage, Greninja's second attack to kill like multiple things. They're Ionoing us, which is pretty sad because I have the Bib in hand and the Pidgeot in hand. But then we got the Forest Seal Stone, but we don't have a V in play. Our hand's kind of dead. But if they knock this out, we do have Fez to draw. So we're not in the worst situation. We just need to hit, like, a Arvin. A Arvin, maybe. Definitely going to promote the Froki up here. We're, we're just going to pretend like we're going to attack. Like, we can attack next turn. Promote the Froki. Top deck, maybe like a Luminion. Ultra Ball is not bad. We're going to Fez here. We don't want to get rid of any of these cards in our hand. And that is horrible. But at least we can like at least discard the Buddy Poffin with the Ultra Ball. We can get Luminion here. Yeah, two cards we don't really need. Oh, I got, I got the Greninja. 
I guess I didn't want to put the minion down as a liability. So we get rid of the pal pad because I realize I don't need a lot of these cards. All right, I haven't used a lot of supporters either. So we're gonna rare candy for ninja. Attach our water energy. And at least we attack, and then we can we can search for a card that we need. right now we're in we're kind of in a good spot it's just like we don't have another card like another froki set up so that's the only issue here and i'm out of i don't know for sure i think the bib i think it's always bib so we can draw more next turn and then if they kill us we also have pheasantipity to draw as well so once we knocked out their terror they do have to get rid of some pokemon which i'm guessing they're going to get rid of like fan rotom Oh, we have Arvin in hand now. Not bad, not bad. I think the play for them is just, again, Therapagos, pop another Dust Noir. And then we'll be at one prize. So we we do have Arvin. If they don't Iona us here, we could attack with Blood Moon or Saluna. Just because we have... They have, they after this round, they will have two prize left, which means Blood Moon or Saluna only needs one energy. So we can attach the water energy and start attacking for 240. What are they gonna nest ball here? I think they're just trying to fill up their bench. They need a full bench plus the Dust Noir to knock out my Pokemon. And they're thinning out their deck so they can use Pheasantipity afterwards. They're choosing to put down Blood Moon, which they're... I don't think they'll attack with Blood Moon. Because Blood Moon is weak to fighting. Actually, no, they might attack with Blood Moon just because it has higher HP. So if I decide to use my Blood Moon, I can't knock out the Blood Moon unless I boss. What would I do here? Or what would my opponent do? Yeah, I think they're just filling up the bench. Oh no, they they got Noctowl. So they have a lot of a lot of things they can do. Probably can like get rare candy ultra ball for Dust Noir. They still have Pidgeot's ability. They still have Fezidipity's ability. They have a lot of things they could do here. I own no rare candy, so they they I'm guessing they already have Dust Noir in their hand. They're gonna pop that. I own me to one card. I might be I might actually be in trouble. But I still have Fez. So it's not the worst. Let's see what we can do with it, though. Nice stretch ring back. Guessing to fill up more in the bench. But I still think they're going to attack with Blood Moon or Saluna here. Just because it has more HP. But then again, my opponent, I don't think... I don't know if they know I run Blood Moon or Saluna. Yeah, so they're attacking with Terrapicos. Pop the Dust Nor on my Greninja. Put me down to one prize. So next turn we would need somehow to bring out Ursaluna and an energy. Okay, two Arvins in my hand. I don't think we've used any Arvins yet, so we still have two in the deck. Arvin would help us win this game, sort of. Yeah, they're filling up the bench so they can do maximum damage here. Maximum damage the Raps can do is 220? 220 plus 130. Oh, they have plenty of damage for sure, but... I do... I hit the Arvin. The one card Arvin. So we could get Nest Ball, but we still need... A energy here. So they're gonna knock us out. We're gonna promote the Giraffe Rig. Just because it has a rescue board attached. So we can retreat if we need to. Bring that up. Need an energy and Cleffa is not what we need. So we're gonna Pheasantipity for three. Get whatever we need first. What we can get, we got Luminion and Arvin. And Ultra Ball, not bad. So Ultra Ball can get us Ursaluna. Arvin can get us the forest seal stone here 
Oh yeah, I get the Nest Ball too. We get the Ursaluna. We put down Luminion to put the Forest Seal Stone to use to get the energy that we need. So we get Blood Moon Ursaluna. Place Luminion down. We can get, we can get a supporter if we need to, but I we don't really need to. I'm just gonna grab it just just because. Don't matter. Forest Seal Stone activated. And then we go grab our one energy. She's the water. Attached to the Blood Moon, which she's doing 240 for just one energy. And our opponent already conceded, and we took the dub. Hopping onto our second game, we get to choose again. For the coin flip, we're gonna choose heads, and we won again. So we're gonna choose to go first. Uh, this game is actually a fun one. It's kind of crazy, the matchup that we got and the cards we got in our hand. So we did hit the mulligan, which is okay. This was a pretty bad hand anyways. But once you guys see what we're up against, which you guys might if you guys look at the timestamp. And then the card setup that we have is kind of crazy. So our opponent's choosing their Pokemon. They're putting two down. So yep, Mulligan for one. So we start with Girafferig and the Ferrigiraff EX in our hand. And wait till they flip their Pokemon. The, their Pokemon. It's 2-2 two, two Mass Ogrepan, which means it's either Raging Bolt or Regidrago. Most likely, I'm gonna say it's a Regidrago. So I'm getting in the nest ball here. I'm just gonna put down whatever just because I know they can knock out my giraffe rig. But we literally have Thornton in our hand. Yeah. So I chose Ronan V, so at least I can draw. I attached a double turbo. Since I already have another one in hand. Even if they knock it out, we're just gonna throw in the giraffe rig back. And then we put the switches basically switch it to the Rotom V and then we evolve and then they literally can't do anything. So as we watch, we're going to be hoping it's Raging Bolt, but we know it's Raging Bolt because this is pre-recorded. They're doing Raging Bolt things to dance, put an energy to draw. They got trekking shoes that are going through their deck. Probably digging for Raging Bolt and Squawk here. They got the Ultra Ball. And they do have a lightning energy, <clears throat> excuse me, in their discard pile, which means they, if they do have Sada in hand, they are able to use that. They got rid of a Pokemon catcher. Yep, it's Raging Boat, guys. Watch as we lock him down. Because uh, Ferrigiraf's ability says basic Pokemon EX cannot do damage. So even if they boss around, they can kill other Pokemon, but we will only have that Pokemon in the active. So right now, this is the control part slash like the crystal box aspect of this deck. Our main attacker is Greninja, but we are, for this matchup specifically, we're going to attack with Herigiraf. So they did have Sada in hand and they do have the Squawk. And then they Pokestop too, so I'm pretty sure... They're doing everything they can, and then they just squawk their hand away. Put down another Raging Bolt. They bench lock themselves. So in this matchup, most lists do run like a one prize basic Pokemon that's not an EX. And that's a way to kind of attack the Ferrigiraf. Like they just squawk away their Sandy Shock. I think in their, in their head, they're like, oh, I'm gonna knock this guy out anyways. It don't matter. I don't need the Sandy Shock, but that's a big mistake. Because luckily, we do have Thornton in our hand. We put the Rotom V up here. And we throw it back. So we switch the Giraffe Rig with the Rotom V. Evolve. We attach for turn. So right now, we either need the Psychic Energy or the Crystal. Uh, I personally... I Pokestop just because I was searching for like something, but I feel like in this situation, we would not want to Pokestop 
just in case our crystal or our psychic energy gets discarded. But we do one we do run one super rod. But I think I was digging for Earthen Vessel. So right now my opponent literally can't do anything. I can try to attack. It just won't go through, basically. It does zero damage. No damage can be taken. My opponent is probably reading my card. And then the Night Stretcher. Guessing an energy. Or the Sandy Shock. Yep, they, they nice stretch back to Sandy Shot because they, re they realized that is the only viable attacking option for them. They're gonna Poke Gear. They got Iono. If that if that he Ionos, it might help us because we need that psychic energy or the crystal. So if if he Ionos, we can hit the Arvin that can get us either or. They attach a fighting to the bench Pokemon. Because they know they can't attack. But I feel like unless they run... They definitely run Switch cards. But they're kind of expecting me to kill the Raging Bolt. They Pokestop and got three items. Pretty good Pokestop for them. But like I said, we're just sitting here. We're chilling. They're fighting for their lives. And we, we top deck the Sparkling Crystal. Like, what are the odds? We can start attacking now. We do 30 damage to the bench, but since it's double turbo, it will be reduced to 10. So right here, they want me to knock it out. But the big brain play is, we do have counter catcher in hand and they have five prize, so we have six. So we can activate that or we can just not attack at all and just basically pass our turn. I think I'm gonna probably do the counter catcher play and just bring up another Pokemon and start attacking just for funsies. Yeah, I think we bring up a squawk. Get a little damage on him, you know? Then put 10 on the Raging Bolt. Then we do have Arvin, so we run two counter catchers in this deck. If we have a second counter catcher, we can maybe bring up the other Raging Bolt and just like start putting damage everywhere by the time they get sandy shock they already have like all these damages on their two prize pokemon so we have iono too which is a pretty good card i'm just gonna arvin to see if we have the uh counter catcher which we don't it is prize so i just got the heavy ball just i was like why not i'm gonna check my prize for sure because we know we run two counter catchers in this deck yeah, I was checking. I was like, we used one. We didn't use the other one. And there it is. The, uh, the second one is in the prize. I'm going to take a card anyways, just because I don't want to deck out, even though they're only at 18 cards left. And I just end my turn because I know they have Sandy Shock in their hand. So their bench is locked and they literally can't do anything. And we just keep passing until they deck out. What will they do? And they just conceded. And that's why I think this is considered a control deck. All right, guys, jumping into our very last game. I really wanted to pick this game just to highlight kind of all the attackers you can use in this deck. Uh, my opponent did lose the coin flip, so we're gonna decide to go first. And if you can see from the timestamp, we're going against Dragapult. They started with a Lonely Dreepy. We started with Wellspring Ogre Pond and we top deck a Froakie. We get this Buddy Poffin. We know for sure they can't attack, so we get Badoof and a Pidgey. A smart thing to do is to always check your prize to make sure you have the Bavero or even the Pidgey or the Pidgeot, I mean. But that's all we can do for our first turn, which is not the worst and not the best. But we do have some supporters in our hand to kind of do some stuff next turn. It looks like they got Arvin, which is probably going to get Buddy Poffin. Which will probably get two more Dreepies and maybe a Pidgey, depending on which... Oh, a Duskull. 
Because Dragapult nowadays, I think it's better not to run the Pidgeot. So you can fit in more things. Put down the four Seal Stone, but I don't think they'll use it. Yeah, they're just going to Insta-Star for three cards. Now it's up to our turn. Let's see what we can do. Super Rod is not the card we're looking for. Uh, we're debating between Iono and Arvin here. I think if we get Arvin, we can get an Ultra Ball for sure. But then we have no way to get Energy or any way to get the Wellspring over Pond EX out of the active. But I think we have to Arvin. We just start setting up. We at least set up our Pidgeot so they don't get knocked out next turn. But everything else will still be alive. Just because a Pidgey is 60 HP. Well, I guess our Bidoof will get knocked out too. But that's only one prize. We'll take that chance, right? I think we should definitely get a Ultra Ball. Because we have Rare Candy in hand. And then... For the... Tool, we'll just get the Rescue Board to retreat. Yeah, we're gonna Ultra Ball here for Pidgeot EX. Which... We probably get rid of the boss order here. Maybe the Iono? Or the Forest Heal Stone. Just gonna save the Forest Heal Stone in case we need it for later. We get our Pidgeot here, and then we can also evolve it with the rare candy we have. And then we can get Pidgeot's ability to get the Barrow. That way, none of our Pokemon will be knocked out next turn. It's a slow turn, since we can't really do anything to attack. Starting the Wellspring over Pond is kind of sad. But we can put the Rescue Board on the Wellspring over Pond and we can draw more. Hopefully, maybe we can even get like Rare Candy uh, Greninja, but we don't. So I think the best option right now is to thin our deck, get a Fez in case we knock out the, our Pokemon. Or we set up another Froakie. We can set up another Froakie. Like I said, this is pre-recorded. So I don't remember exactly what I was thinking about. But just in case. And then we're going to Cleffa for... I believe four cards. Yep. We got the rare candy. Which is okay. We still need to hit... A... A Greninja EX. Which we can get from Pidgeot EX ability. They did evolve their drag cloak. Now they're drawing two and they're putting one back into the bottom, one into their hand. And they got the red candy. So I'm guessing they're gonna evolve their Dreepy Napple into a drag cloak EX. Oh, and they have the Forest Seal Stone from last turn that they did not use. So they for sure got the drag bolt. But can they attack this turn? And they have the crystal in their hand as well. So they're just attacking. No dust goal or dust clop or anything. So they do take one prize. So during this game, my thought process is let's show the viewers that we don't need to use Greninja EX at all. That's why I put up the Wellspring Ogre Pond, but it also has a retreat, a free retreat as well. So right now we can go into Pidgeot's EX ability and grab a counter catcher. We can bring up their Rotom. Most Dragapult lists don't really run a switching option. Maybe they have one switch. But other than that, not really. Get the counter catcher here. We bring up the Rotom. And then we can attach the one water energy. And then now we hit them with Sob, which means they cannot retreat. So they do have two Dusk Goal in their bench, so they can double Dust Nor and kill the Wellspring Ogre Pond, but they still can't retreat. And then we have, we do run Thornton, so we can bring back the Wellspring Ogre Pond by surprise. So they got Arvin, which I'm guessing they're gonna get a switching option, which they're not, okay, they're not. They're getting a rare candy. They're probably gonna rare candy one of the dust gold. Are they just setting up more? And they just start for three. We 
do get the Greninja, so I am going to rare candy that so they can't knock it out. And then I'm going to get the Pidgeot's ability. Probably just get some card at the now. We can probably even get a I don't know since we haven't used a support this turn. I think Iona's the way. They're digging for cards to try to get Dust Norn. We know for sure they have Rare Candy in their hand. I'm gonna attach the energy to Froki. Just so in case they do double Dust Nor, we can throw in the Volsman Overpond back with the Froki. That's why I'm not evolving that Froki. No matter what, we have to have one basic Pokemon in play in order for Thorin to work. So using the Heavy Ball, check my prizes. We have two double turbo, turbo energy in there, which is not the best. We only run three, so we only have one in the deck. Now let's see what our opponent is up to. They only have six cards left since we I own them. I'm guessing they don't have a switch, which is why they're not, they didn't get it from the Arvin last turn. My opponent is obviously thinking really hard right now. He has no idea how to face this Wellspring Ogre Pun. He's drawing some cards with Drag Cloak's ability. He got another Drag Cloak, more drawing. I mean, the more they draw, the better, because they're going to deck out faster. The thing with Wellspring Ogre Pond, you guys are probably thinking, oh, I'm doing 20 damage every turn. Eventually, it's going to get knocked out. No, we're going to put a double turbo in double turbo energy on and then we'll be doing zero damage so they do got the rare candy and the ultra ball so they're definitely getting dust nor here can they pull off a double dust nor all right so they got the dust nor which they're popping which we get a prize card hopefully we get a double turbo One prize, they're down. We're equal in prizes now. We didn't get the double turbo, sad, but that's okay. They do run a switch. I'm surprised they didn't use the switch the other turn, but I'm guessing they're trying to save it since that might be their only switch. So they're gonna get three prizes here, which is fine because luckily from that Iona, we did get a Thornton straight into our hand, and then we can use Pidgeot's EX ability to bring to get a counter catcher which we only run two I didn't yeah it's still in the deck we heavy ball earlier so it should be in the deck. so we throw in bring back our wellspring over pond we counter catcher up back the road him and then we gonna sob them for another 20 And then our opponent decides to thumbs us up because we're kind of being a little toxic, you know? That's why we're kind of, you know, define the, the term controlled Greninja deck. We're controlling them. We're forcing them to do things that they don't want to. So they do have another Dust Nord or a Dust Clops, and then they just need a Dust Nord set up. But even if they pop it, I don't think they can knock us out. They would need another Dust Skull in play. That I don't know to only two cards. Interesting. But they do have two Dracloats ability to use Recon Direct Directive. They have Night Stretcher. We're in trouble. I think most lists runs either one or two Night Stretcher. So they do have a chance to bring back their Dust Nor and double pop it again. So I'm going into my deck now to probably get a double turbo so we don't knock out this Rotom V at all. And we just hope they can't double Dust Nors. So we stop for zero damage, but they can't retreat at all. Yeah, my guess is they're gonna double Dust Nord, but they need another Night Stretcher? Or no, they'd probably have another Dust Nord in their deck. They only use one so far. So that's Recon Directive. 
drawing more. The more they draw, the faster they lose. Because the point of Sob is just we're going to try to deck them out. So there's the Dust Nor. Which I don't think they'll pop it yet. They'll probably wait till they have both. They're going to dig for that Night Stretcher. Rare Candy Night Stretcher for me. So right here, I decided I do run a Lost City. So I'm going to put that down just so if they pop their dust more they can't retreat it and that one has dust clop in there too so they need a rare candy and a nice stretcher in order to retrieve to do double dust nor play on us to knock out our wellspring but they got rid of the lost city real quick i should have known most deck run temple of Sinnoh for dragon so they popped it do they have the Night Stretcher? Do they have the Night Stretcher rare candy in hand? If so, we're kind of cooked. Buddy Poffin, probably for a Dreepy, I'm guessing. Has to be a Dreepy. Unless they run three Dusk Gold. But usually it's a 2-1-2 two, two line. I could be wrong. It could run a three, three, one, two. I think my opponent might be looking through their deck to see their outs right now. Maybe their nice stretcher or rare candy. Oh, they conceded, so their nice stretcher or rare candy might not even be there. That is it for this video. Let me know in the comments what deck I should play in the next video. But in the meantime, you guys can check out my other videos right over here. And subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Whoosh.